were a per- persecutor or a victim. You know, when when we got in trouble, it was, oh my gosh, do you know what this will look like for us? Do you know how hard this is going to be for me? Do you know how hard I have worked to give you everything? And now like this, now this is just devastating for me. It's all about their emotions. It's all about what I'm going through. Not you. We don't care about you. <laughs> Um, what kind of role are you playing when your children go against what you're telling them to do, when they make their own choices, when they fail? Those are the roles we typically go um, towards. But then that creates drama, that creates tension in the home, disconnection, because it puts your child in either in a victim mentality, it disempowers them completely because you're always in control. My next question is, what kind of child do you want to raise when it comes to decision making? What kind of child do you want to to have? My goal was always to have a, a son that that will be able to um to to raise a raise up a family and 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 have a wife and be a provider i wanted to raise a son that that was what is the word <laughs> that that added to humanity that 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 gave value added value to the world what kind of child do you want to raise when it comes to making decisions, because if we are making all the decisions for them, guess what? We're not raising independent children. We're raising um, children to always depend on others. First is on us. When they leave the home, it'll be their job. It'll be their spouses. It'll be their friends. It'll always be dependent on other people to make decisions, to get validation. So what kind of children are you raising? Because I want to, I'm thinking about like what, what kind of child I want my daughter to be as well. I talk a lot about my son, but I, I want to make sure that my daughter knows who she is. I know with all this women empowerment, I want my daughter to know who she is. But I also want her to have a balance in, in her masculine and feminine energy and know when to ask for help, know how to process her emotions, feel empowered to make decisions Know that she is ultimately the one that knows the answer to all her questions. She is the one that has the source of wisdom and knowledge when it comes to her life, her, her, what she wants, what she doesn't want. I want to empower that. I want to empower my children to tap within, not to go to external sources to find the answers to their to their problems to to their next decision wh- whether it's a big one or a small one i'm constantly telling my children what do you think what do you think is the best thing so my next question i want to ask is are you stepping in to assert power when it comes to decisions when you come when it comes to knowing when you need to step in and when you should let them make their own choices and fail. I want to ask you, why do you want to step in? Do you want to step in to say, I am, you need to listen to me and I am the boss and you say what I say, you do what I, what I say. And it's just because I say so, is it so you can assert power so you can win or is it to keep them safe so it's a win-win situation which one is it that's a great question because when we are ordering or correcting or directing that will always lead to power struggles in the home 
in the relationship. Always. It's a cycle when we order them to do something, then we correct them, then we tell them what how to do it. Then it's then they feel disempowered. So they push, they push and push. And then we push because we need to tell them we are the boss, because we are older, because we are bigger, because we're the boss because we are in charge of everything and we push and push and and it's just a constant battle. But that doesn't lead to connection. That doesn't lead to growth and love and compassion. So once you know, once you have answered those questions, I'm going to give you some tools that will help you get, get your children to start making decisions on their own and and wanting to do that and how you can help them start making decisions on their own if you if they are not already how to make your environment a decision rich environment and how to set up consequences so when they don't follow through on what you need to get done what needs to get done what things that have to get done how to follow through on those consequences. So some of the tools that I'm going over, I got from Positive Parenting. This is the best investment I've ever made. I bought it, oh my gosh, I don't know how long ago. It was probably, my son was young. I don't know, I'm going to say 15 years ago. I bought this membership through Positive Parenting and it is amazing. I'm not sure who the, oh my gosh, I can't remember. I know it's Lisa something. She is the one that does the course and you buy the course and there's books, there's videos, but that I've used her, her tools to raise my kids. And so I'm going to share some of, of those tools with you because I, I love her techniques. Um, And I'm going to just put in my, my, take on this tools, but the tools that she teaches to start um, helping your children start empowering them. Because when, when you want them to make decisions on their own, when you, when they're getting older, right after they turn 12, I read once in a book that when they, when your kids turn 12, you're done parenting from 12 until 15 uh 18 depending on boys boy or girl your kids put out like they start testing everything you taught them it's their job to go out into the world and test everything push all the boundaries all the limits and see oh my parents taught me this let's see if it's real let's see if i like it let's see if it works let's see if they were right that is their job to do that. That's this is when your kids detach from you for the most part and they find and they connect with their friends. Their friends, that circle of friends become more important than the parents during this stage. That's why it's so important for you to make sure that they have good friends during that time or that you teach them early on how to pick good friends and how to leave groups of friends that are not beneficial to them because once they they become teenagers you are no longer their center of attention you're no longer the world and your opinion becomes secondary Um, and then at 18 most of them come back and they need you and they start like going back to okay now i need your support and then eventually they leave again um, I can't remember what book I read that in, but it stood out to me and I, it's so important. But anyway, some of the tools that might help you to start building um, that internal motivation for your kids to want to take action, to want to do things, want to go for a sport or want to work on their homework, get a better grade, make friends, um, go to church read their scriptures, whatever it is, right? They need that internal motivation without you always directing them and ordering them and correcting them, right? Because then that leads to external motivation and they'll always look for outside reward. Some of the things that have worked are, 
are you spending one-on-one time with your kids, even if it's five minutes? And during that one-on-one time, make sure that it's doing something that they want. If it's just sitting there with them, then so be it. If it's just listening to them, all right. When my kids were younger, uh, it was playing with, with their toys for five, 10 minutes. It was reading them a book. It was going outside and playing with them or taking them to the pool, whatever it was that they wanted. Make sure that they enjoy and they pick what they want to do with that time with you. It is so valuable because then the, the power struggles diminish. They're no longer fighting for your attention in any form or shape, because they know that they can look forward to that one-on-one time with you. And that builds their self-esteem, that lets them know that they're valued, they're heard, and they're seen. When you communicate with your kids, I used to be a yeller, okay? I know, because I grew up in a home where we yelled, and we're Latinos, we yell, we raise our voice all the time. So, but when you communicate Learn to speak in a calm, soft voice when you're trying to say the rules, when you're trying to speak to them, because this allows them to, it, it creates a warm and welcoming environment where you they are welcome to speak. If you yell, you are trying to force your um yourself on them, you are not giving them the opportunity to speak up. Plus, I if you try this test, if you yell, try yelling at someone, asking them a question by yelling at them. And you're going to see notice that they're going to yell at you back and then lower your voice and ask them a question and like whispering voice. And they're going to whisper at them. Also, people tend to mirror your tone of voice. So if you want your children to stop fighting you when you want to set up to get involved and and set up rules and consequences, make sure that you are talking to them in a calm voice. And then also make sure that you avoid rewarding them and actually switch that to encouragement. And encouragement looks like in, like admiring the work, admiring the action, and not them. Let me give you an example. When your kids draw something, it looks beautiful, right? Your instinct is to be like, oh my gosh, you're such a talented um, artist. You are so good, right? Your instinct is to build them up, right? After they have done this amazing job. But what happens is we're teaching them to get to get that gratification from our words and from an outside source. So encouragement looks like this. That drawing looks amazing. What do you think? How do you feel about that drawing? Do you love it? Oh my gosh, that that looks like a lot of hard work. I love that you put so much work and effort into that drawing. Notice how you're complementing the action and the work, the final result, and not them. They are Their worth, their value is not attached to this drawing. They are not loved more or praised more because of what they just did. When they do a chore in the home... I like to say that looks amazing. You cleaned the couch. You cleaned the table so nicely. I can tell that you put in a lot of effort, that you work so hard. Thank you so much for collaborating in the home and cooperating and helping the home feel nicer and more beautiful and in a place where we want to be. Um, Notice how I'm encouraging them by by giving them uh, encouragement and and giving them valuable feedback, but it has nothing to do with them. I'm not labeling them. I'm not putting those labels that later in, in life will be so hard to get rid of or so hard to fill up those cups if we're always dependent on others. Trust me, I'm I'm working on this for so long trying to get rid of the labels my parents put on me growing up and then 
also trying to work so hard on not expecting my husband 